Hey guys, Stephanie here and welcome to my channel. If you're new, my name is Stephanie and at the Aeroponic Tower channel, I share how to grow food using aeroponics, but more I show how aeroponics is a tool to grow about 80% of my family's produce. And then I like to share how we use this superfood in our everyday lifestyle for overall health and wellness and just living a life where we're thriving, not surviving, because that is the goal. So today I thought I would just take you along as I start some seeds. This question I get the most of, and also I get the question of where do you get your seeds? So I've created a document for you guys and if you go to the description below, there is one link that will take you over to my page where I store all of the links for anything I share. It's easier to keep the links up to date that way. And I will put my resource document. It's totally free. You can download it for purchasing seeds along with some discount codes to some of my favorite places. So seeds starting. So one of the things I talk about most on this channel when it comes to aeroponics, that's different than maybe other people who are growing food this way is I am trying to max out, maximize what we can grow on these towers and turning over the food really quickly is the key to that. And being able to turn your food over really quickly, you have to follow an interval planting process. So I have plants that are mature and ready to be harvested today, like this gorgeous arugula, and I have new seedlings ready to take its place. A lot of those early growing days that can be very slow and time consuming for food are done in our grow station. Simple grow station, I use the Tower Garden Germinator. I also have some Fairy Morse lights and a heat mat. And it's I, and I grow on nine towers and, and all I need is one shelf to grow all of that food. When we're growing aeroponically and we're growing year round and when we're interval planting, instead of having 50 cabbage that we're gonna plant all at once in season, harvest those and store them like I used to when I was soil gardening, I'm growing 50 cabbage throughout the year so that I always have access to fresh cabbage and I don't have to store it and preserve it and eat food that's been sitting somewhere for months on end. So that is the difference with aeroponics, which just means we have systems that are easier to manage and we're chipping off a little bit of chores daily on these instead of having to do these mass loads of planting and harvesting and preserve. It also means we get fresh food year round, which was always the key for me. And the one thing that was always missing when I was trying to soil garden. When I felt called to start this YouTube channel, I listened to some advice from people out there who are experts in this area and they said, document what you do. Because when you document what you do, we have an endless amount of content that we can share as content creators, but it also doesn't feel like work and there's no pressure to try and entertain or fake anything or have to create some false story. So that's what I'm doing. When I start seeds, I love to document it and take you guys along with me because this is the question I get the most. So here I have some arugula. And I just made a reel, so if you don't like long form videos, because I know I can talk long sometimes, sorry. Uh, they, I tried to make reels of a lot of this content too, which gives you all the information in about 60 seconds. But this is arugula, and the trick to not having bitter arugula, there's a couple of things. First, never grow arugula, cut it and let it regrow. Arugula, the, what makes arugula bitter is a chemical compound, and that chemical is released in the plant when the plant under goes stress. It's like a self-preserving mechanism. So if you have a lot of pests on arugula when you're growing in the soil, it's going to trigger it to be bitter. If it's extremely hot, puts the plant under stress, it's going to cause it to be bitter. When we cut it and let it regrow, it causes stress and the next time it regrows, it's going to be bitter. Age is also another key factor. A lot of what I see with the towers is instead of the interval turnover that's really quick that I recommend, and I'll give you guys my formula here in a minute. What I often see is people leave their food on their towers a really long time. There's almost this fear because it looks so good and we don't want to have a tower with nothing in it. So there is this fear and if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. I do it too. I'll look at something and think, oh, just a couple more days. And or people will just kind of nibble off their plants and let them sit there for a really long time. I like to move us away from those habits. I say plant a food, plant a lot of it, harvest the whole thing, eat it, even if it's small. It doesn't matter because at least we're getting fresh produce into our bodies. And the better you get at starting your seeds every two weeks and staying on top of that, it won't matter if you're eating a bouquet of arugula that may be a little bit smaller than the one you had 
last time because you have so much food just rotating in and out. It's just giving you an endless supply of food that you can consume off your tower. So avoiding bitterness with arugula means harvesting it when it's young. So we wanna grow it quick, we wanna heavily seed it, we wanna harvest the whole thing when it's really young, and then we start over. So I'm gonna show you guys how to start those seeds today. There's also a couple of varieties that are a little bit more mild in flavor. When you get into like wild arugulas, wild arugulas can tend to be a lot more pungent than some of these other varieties. There's Apollo, I think it's Apollo 2 and Astro. Astro is the other name. Those are very mild varieties. And the, and then one more trick when it comes to planting arugula or any kind of green that you wanna grow as a baby green is we need to move away from purchasing an envelope of seeds and we need to move into purchasing sprouting seeds where we're buying seeds in bulk. So the difference in seed, there's no difference in seeds. So. And actually, that may not be true. There might be a little higher quality to these, like increased germination rate. But this one tells you on the back the germination rate on them, 97% germination rate. That's amazing. The only real difference that I know of is they're sold in bulk. They're for people who want to grow sprouts. And if you, know, you were a company trying to sell the idea of growing your own sprouts and you were charging $5 a packet for 100 seeds, that's going to give you no sprouts at all hardly, you're not going to be very successful. So they sell them in bulk. There's, there's an enormous amount of seeds in here. I think this was about $14. This is like a year's supply of arugula. I don't need to buy arugula for a very, very long time. So for $14, I can have over a year's supply of arugula seeds. That's incredible. These can be as much as like $5 now in some companies, um, anywhere from two to $5. So definitely get it, the sprouting seeds for anything you wanna grow as a bouquet of baby greens. So the ones I'm gonna plant, I found these on Amazon and I will link it below. I'll link it in my seed file because I've actually really liked this variety. Uh, I think I paid about $16 for this one and this is 16 ounces. Look at this guys, like I have to eat a whole bunch of arugula to go through this. Now, good thing is I love arugula. Arugula is also a mega superfood. It's incredibly helpful for bone health, muscle health, and what I think is really, really important about arugula, arugula is it supports neurological health. And a lot of the toxins and a lot of the things we're exposed to today are known neurological, um, I don't know what we would call them, are known to attack the nervous system. And we see that in a lot of autoimmune disorders that are coming up. So eating foods that help support my, neur my neurological system is really important to me because that was actually one of the things that I had to reverse through my healing journey was to heal my nervous system and some significant damage that had been done to it. Also nursing a hand injury where there's some tendon, muscle, and bone damage. And so arugula is a superfood to help support the healing of my hand. So we're gonna start more of this. I like to stay on top of my arugula and I'll show you guys how to get these seeds going. So I mention these trays all the time. You can find them in that link I mentioned. And I do 12 rock wool per tray because I have a lot of towers. If you only have one tower, the formula for interval planting is to start, start seeds every two to three weeks and you wanna start one fourth the amount of grow ports in seeds. So if your tower has 28 grow ports, you're gonna start seven new seedlings every two to three weeks. Out of that seven, I say to take about 80% of them and make them fast turnover greens. Plant some baby green salad mix, plant some arugula baby greens, um, I'm doing some wheatgrass over here. These are things that are gonna grow really quickly and we can turn them over really quickly. A head of lettuce is gonna take much longer than a bouquet of baby greens. So in the other two, if you're gonna start seven, five of them are these fast turnaround greens. And then in the other two, you can think about something you need to replace soon. So is your cilantro getting mature and going to want to go to seed and you wanna make sure you have cilantro, then it may be time to start some new cilantro. Um, dill tomatoes, peppers, all of those things. I have a tower gardening journal and I track when to start my stuff through this. And as I plant it, I can put in there, I don't have tomatoes right now, 
um, in this month and I make notes of that so that I don't get into the situation where I don't have tomatoes in January next year. I started my tomatoes too late and I didn't stay on top of the interval process and now I have a gap in some of those foods. So that's what this journal is designed to do. It's got all sorts of pages for specifically tracking what you're growing, how it worked both inside and out, chores you need to do each month to make sure you stay on top of always having food and kind of closing that gap. Now we're not going to get it perfect. I still don't get it perfect and I track it because I'll forget something, but it does help to close that gap, especially with things that are really important to your diet that you want to make sure you don't have to purchase at the grocery store because that is the goal, replacing the grocery store. The grocery store is garbage. I'll also be recording a video soon showing you how I shop to stay out of the grocery store. But that's another conversation. So let's get started. So you wanna take your rock wool and soak it for 20 minutes and then dump out any excess water. I have a bucket on the floor here. And now it's wet to the touch. If I pick it up, it's gonna drip a little but we're not pouring water out. These are not sitting in water and any water that just dripped up, dripped, is going to soak back into this rock wool. That's what we're going for. Then I'm gonna take my sprouting seeds and I have a 1 4th teaspoon right here and I have found that about 1 4th teaspoon is enough to fill up three rock wools. So you're going for about a third of a fourth of a teaspoon per rock wool. So one, two, three. Eh, actually, maybe a little bit more than a third. Under a half, over a third, somewhere in there. We're filling up the little hole to where I can't see any of the bottom. So I'm filling the bottom, I would say like three to four layers deep of my arugula seeds. Arugula seeds are bigger than lettuce. With lettuce, I say do one layer deep. But arugula, they're little pellets, so we want a little bit more. And we have our nice filled rock wool. Now, you'll see there's seeds all over the place. They spilled on the top. That's totally fine. And one trick sometimes I do, just to get even more arugula so they're a little bit more dense, is I actually sprinkle them over the top of the rock wool and they will root and it gives you more. Why not? Let's max it out, right? Let's use every bit of growing medium we can to get the most out of our rock wool. Okay, so I've covered the top with a pretty decent amount. And now we're going to take vermiculite and cover this. And I'm gonna cover all of the rock wool, all of the top where I put seeds, you can do this with lettuce too. And that's it. We now have arugula. We'll put a lid on that and put it in our grow station. So some of the other things I wanna to start today, and I only have 24 more things. This Tom Thumb pea, I have been so happy with this this year. I'm just enjoying these so much right now. Uh, they're growing, they're just starting to come in. I did two seeds per rock wool last time. I'm actually gonna try four seeds and see what happens. So let's play with that. My goal is to organize all my seeds and to use up a lot of my old seeds, but I haven't done it yet. So, oh, and my kitty cat's being naughty. So it's kind of a mess, sorry. We did celery and cilantro last time. We did lots of squash and cabbage and cabbage in winter, um, Chinese cabbage and bok choy. I'm gonna do some buckwheat, mostly just curiosity. Oh, I really wanted to do some, I'm gonna do some moringa. I'm gonna do this granat, Chinese cabbage. And what I'm looking for is an onion that, I need more access to onions for our diet. And I found a variety that seems like a happy compromise between waiting years and years for a standard onion and having something larger than a green onion, kind of in between a green onion and a leek. And it's the Ishikura. 
So let's start some of these. That's enough. Now we want to do like things with like things. And so the moringa, the buckwheat, and the peas will make a great companion. Moringa is going to take a lot longer than peas, but I can plop the peas out and put them in the tower pretty quickly or into another um, tray that I have that'll be available. I don't have any more trays than three trays right now. So I can pop these out and move them and then keep these to sprout. So let's start with these three. I will also show you guys how to grow wheatgrass because I'm going to start some wheatgrass. Okay. Moringa. Moringa is a tree and this is a dwarf variety. We will not let it become a tree. So I will talk through more on how to grow and consume this as they grow. They were growing amazing and then I left them in the frost and then they got really unhappy. So I did six Moringa and let's do Actually, I'm just gonna do buckwheat. No. Buckwheat is an amazing food to add to your diet. I think I'm gonna do one, two, three, four. Buckwheat grows kind of leggy, like a little stem. So I'm gonna shoot for five per rock wool and just see how that does. I've never grown it on a tower and I've definitely never grown it inside. Um, I, I can see it being great and successful on a tower outside. I'm not sure about inside, so I'll keep you posted. So I did two of those, and then on these last four, I'm going to start some more Tom Thumb. And let's do four seeds per rock wool and see. Sometimes when you put too many of these large pea seeds, they can get a little moldy and not thrive. All right, we're just going to... Do a light dusting of vermiculite, like almost not even really using any vermiculite. I, I find it hard not to use vermiculite. Like I feel like there needs to be some protection on the plants. People say all the time, you don't have to use it. So I just did a light dusting. So we've got those ready to go. I'm gonna move my journal. You can find this in my link. It's so pretty. I love it. It's so much fun. And let's do this last tray. I'm almost done. I'm recording real quick. You can stay in. All right, we've got our cabbage, our granite cabbage, onion. Let me look. Okay, I'm actually gonna start a couple of cucumbers too. My cucumbers haven't been doing that great. And I definitely want cucumbers. So. Okay. So I went and pulled a few things. Radish, I've had a lot of success with radish on my towers and I absolutely love radish. So we're going to, radish is one if you're gonna grow a lot of it, buy it in sprouting seeds. It's my plan next, but until then, I'm just gonna use up these radish seeds that I have. And so I'm gonna do five per rock wool. And then you can kind of harvest the one that's the largest and leave the others to grow out. And let's do six rock wool of the radish. Actually, we're gonna do eight. Okay, and we'll save these for next time. Radish is definitely one you can put in your bi-weekly rotation. Maybe every three weeks. So you take a little bit longer and you can let a lot of that early growing happen in your grow station so that you don't take up space. So let's do a couple of these onions and then I'm not gonna do the cabbage because I've got a lot of bok choys. What I don't have that's thriving are Kalima green beans. So we're gonna do the Kalima green beans. I also like these jade green beans from MI Gardener. And I think I'll divide it up and do a couple of each. So let's do some onion. I'm gonna do about seven per rock wool. 
And we're going to need another tray. All right, I found the seeds I was looking for. I found another tray. If you get your supplies right, get your trays, get your seed starting station, buy a big bag of vermiculite. It makes this whole process just so much easier. Um, and you always have things. So I soaked these. I'm gonna dump the water out. I'm leaving a little bit more water in there than I typically do because I didn't soak these for 20 minutes. I soaked them for three minutes. And we're gonna do some ooh, jade green beans. I'm gonna do three per rock wool. And let's do four of those. And then we're gonna do our kalima. The kalima bean is a longer bean. So you get about 30% more food per green bean because it's just bigger and it grows prolific and fast. Um, let's do four of those. And then the last four, we're gonna do some cucumber. And I pulled a garden hybrid bush pickle. I really like this one. Seems to do really well. I just do one seed per rock bowl. Actually, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try three seeds per rock bowl. We're gonna push the limits here. I don't really know how that'll do inside, so I'll keep you posted. I can always thin them out if I feel like it's not working. But that's been my new thing lately is trying to push the limit of how many seeds can I add to get the most food without stunting the plant. Because too many, you'll stunt the plant. And this is a salad more cucumber pickle. So we'll do two throat ruffles of this. And I'm gonna do three per ruffle. Okay, we're gonna cover these with vermiculite and I will take you guys over to the grow station and we will get these set up. I wanted to talk a little bit more about the interval processing formula. So like I mentioned, take a fourth of your grow ports and start that many seeds every two to three weeks. Journal it, very important to take notes so you can start to fill those gaps and see how quickly you can get things. I'm out of arugula right now. I didn't stay on top of my arugula planting. So now I'm three weeks, four weeks from being able to harvest arugula and I don't want that. So those are the kind of things I'm trying to do to kind of close that gap. Um, out of that one fourth, so let's say it's seven, five of them, fast growing things. Fast growing things can be heavily seeded things. I'm looking at my towers trying to think of things to tell you. Baby greens, arugula, your mustards, anything that you're heavily seeding, those are fast. If you wanna grow a head of lettuce, that's sort of a middle of the, the line. Thing. So it's going to be faster. That kind of goes along with like kale. Kale you can grow for a couple of months and eat off of it. So you don't need to be starting kale seeds every two weeks. You need to be starting kale seeds maybe every six weeks. And again, that's where journaling is going to help you because it. I can give you ideas. And I put a lot of them in my ebook if you want to purchase that. It's the ultimate guide to tower gardening. And I say in there like plant these every six weeks or so. But those are just baseline. It's going to really depend on how much you eat, how big you like to, your food to get in those things uh, but you got you know kohlrabi is going to take a little bit longer so we want to be starting those maybe every eight weeks and then tomatoes and peppers and eggplants i usually say to start those every three months every quarter to stay on top of those kind of things what will happen is you may think i don't want to eat that many fast greens every two weeks but some will start to be ready and coming out but eventually your kale is going to need to come out and you'll be replacing fast greens where the kale was and then you may have another slower or medium growing food going in so that it's not a perfect number but if we but i have found if you kind of stick to that 80 20 rule then the overlapping is really consistent and we get a lot of food that we can harvest. 
Also, when you're growing indoors, it's important to be okay with harvesting food when it's a little bit smaller. I do that quite a bit. Right now, my towers are not super mature. I'm waiting for the peppers and tomatoes and squash and all of those bigger foods. And in the meantime, I'm harvesting what I can off my kales and things that are that you're able to kind of come and cut, like you're able to kind of nibble on as they're growing. I'm doing my fast turnover foods to get those. And then if I need, if I have a start that's ready to go into the tower, and I have a cabbage that's only half grown and I want to make stir fry and not have a salad, then harvest that half grown cabbage and eat it and put another one in because the better we get at the interval planting, the more you'll be able to eat and you will be able to have that full size cabbage, eventually Napa cabbage. Um, and it just gives you food to eat in the interim. I definitely eat things a little bit younger and smaller when growing indoors than I do outside. So let's put these on the grow station and take a look at what we have that's growing right now. All right guys, so let's go rearrange. Here's my grow station. Um, right now I'm recommending the Germinator by Tower Garden. I just have this on a shelf in my garage. And the reason is I've recommended these Fairy Morse before Tower Garden came up with theirs. And I love them, but you need two. And two is the same price as the Germinator. And the T5 bulbs do burn out over time, unfortunately. And the world is moving into an LED world. So it's getting harder and harder to find these in the bulb replacement. So I think a more sustainable is the Germinator, but I do love my Fairy Morse T5 lights. So if you have those, they are incredible. Um, and we're growing on a heat mat and I just have some random rock wool here. Bye, be careful. I love you. Love you. All right, and we're gonna scoot over. I've got some things that are growing. These are, so when we start, we're gonna put the dome on. Make sure our little vent up here is closed. Put them on the heat mat under the light. And we're gonna leave them there and we want this greenhousing effect here. All this condensation is what we're going for. And most of these have sprouted. I'm waiting on the last three. This is what we're going for, this condensation. And so most of these have sprouted. I'm waiting on a couple and I noticed they just started popping up, this one right here today. So you can leave these covered for about three or so days, no more than five after the seeds have sprouted and it's fine, no longer than five. You wanna make sure you take this dome off. So I'm gonna make sure that's closed. Give this one more day. After your seeds sprout, you're gonna have these little sprout leaves. They're kind of heart-shaped for most of the brassicas and cabbages and things. And when they're in this stage, we're only feeding them water. So I'm trying to keep this rock wool, this one's a little dry actually, wet to the touch. This is definitely dry. Not sopping, not sitting in water, just wet to the touch. And I just give them plain, clean, purified water at this stage. You don't want chlorinated water or city water. Once they start to get their true leaves, like these are starting to get some true leaves. Um, these are still mostly little sprout leaves, but because I heavily seeded these, I will give these minerals sooner than some of the other things. So these are getting mineral water from the tank. When they start to get their true leaves, which is what's happening right here, this is a true leaf. And you can see it's actually yellow because these need some minerals. These need nutrients. So I'm going to feed these now that they have their true leaves and some of their sprout leaves still. Water right from the tank. And again, it's keeping it moist to the touch, not sitting in water, not dried out. These are definitely dried out. I need to water all these seedlings. And then don't water them over the top because it can actually force your seeds out of the rock wool. Water them along the sides and let them soak up the water from the bottom. But we keep everything on the heat mat under the lights full time until I don't have any that are ready, um, but until they have roots on all four sides and on the bottom. Then they're ready to go from here into the tower. So they're pretty big and we can get a lot of these early growing 
times over with in our grow station this isn't taking up real estate in our towers a lot of people want to put them in their towers when they're this size or even this size and we don't want to do that because this is fine here all i have to do is give it nutrient water and it'll be happy and if i put that in my tower it's going to get stunted and it's going to go through a state of shock so if i put some of these in the tower too early they go through a state of shock i've actually tested this and made a video on it if you want to go back and watch that somewhere buried in my videos um it goes through a state of shock and they just sit there and I, i'll get that question a lot why isn't my food growing when we put our food plants in shock they need time to recover even taking my plants from outside to inside put them in a state of shock and the things that were outside are smaller than the plants i just started from scratch in this garage the things i started from scratch have grown almost double in size compared to what i was trying to transition and that's what happens they're not ready to go into the tower they're not ready for that much water we need that established root system on all five sides or pretty close to it and uh, and a pretty decent size on these plants for them to read, be ready to take in the amount of water that they're going to be exposed to in the tower so just get all of that done set up your germinator or your seed starting station find a place to put it where you don't have to fuss with it and these are totally fine check on them every couple of days make sure they're nice and moist and fed and this will make your turnover faster. So we're gonna put this last one on, then I'm gonna show you guys how to do wheatgrass. All right, wheatgrass is an amazing superfood. It's the one thing I say you can put right into the tower. You don't need to put it on the grow station. You can put it on the grow station to save a little time. I did that with these because I actually don't have a tower space for them. They're growing beautifully. Matter of fact, you could just grow them like this and not ever put them in your tower. If you didn't have space, you can get wheatgrass just like this and save your tower. I like to put them in the tower because I let them grow, cut them once and let them regrow. And it just makes life easier than having to water these, but that is an option. So I've got my rock wool heavily soaked, dumping out the excess. I'm leaving water in here because, oh, look at all these seeds. I made a mess. Um, leaving a little more water in this one than I typically would because again, I didn't let these soak for 20 minutes, but I have been soaking my wheatgrass. So wheatgrass is just wheat berries, like you would make ground flour out of. And we wanna soak them because wheatgrass is gonna swell. And if you don't do some of that swelling initially, uh, then they can pop out of the rock wool and it makes it more difficult to grow a lot of it. You wanna be able to double the amount we can get in our rock wool because just the standard hole and what would fit in this hole with dried berries wouldn't give you enough wheatgrass. So what I like to do is open these holes and I do that by just cutting them with a knife and making the hole double the size kind of a pain but again i get to grow and it is easier to do when they're wet but i get to grow two rounds so i can harvest off of this twice and it takes about three rock wool full of wheatgrass to get a one and a half ounce to two ounce shot that will also depend on how good Hello? How good your juicer is. There's a link to my juicer in my store. I use a Kuvings Revo 830. If you have a tower and you're not juicing, it's such a missed opportunity. The health benefits are so amazing. There's a book called Juicing for Life, recommend. And the towers are a no-brainer with juicing because we can grow so many greens. And we don't always, I don't know about you guys, but I don't always want to eat that many greens. I can grow way more greens than I like to eat. But when I juice them, I can juice way more greens than I could ever consume. So it's just a great way to boost overall health and wellness and healing and supporting a life where we're thriving, right? I love that meme that says you're either, what you eat is either creating disease 
we're reversing it and I believe that to be so true. When I think about it that way, it makes it easier the more exciting to want to grow things like wheatgrass. Wheatgrass is a major superfood. Tastes terrible, I will warn you, it tastes terrible. I'll make some juicing videos on how to fix that, but heads up, if you wanna do just plain wheatgrass shots, you're gonna to need to put on your big girl panties. All right, we've almost got this. I'm just ripping them out. I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. Uh, I actually made an insert that someday I hope will be available. Because I did design something that works. So you don't have to do this. All right, so that's what they look like. We made our holes bigger. Ooh, we made our holes bigger. Now we're gonna fill them with one fourth teaspoon of our expanded wheatgrass. I will only wanna go right to the top of the um, rock wool because they will push out if you do too many. Another trick, you could punch little holes in these trays and just grow them with no, no medium, just in a tray and pour water over them. I've done wheatgrass a bunch of different ways. The problem I have found when you do them in trays, you have to stay on top of watering them, which I'm not that great at. I don't have a lot of room in my kitchen for things like that. And they can attract fruit flies into your home when you grow them that way. I like them in the tower. They're getting all the nutrients they need. They're out of the way. They look beautiful. It's just a more ideal spot, in my opinion, to grow them. Oh yeah, that's what they look like. So the only thing I did here that you need to be careful of that I didn't do here is I individually broke these rock wool apart and you can see the roots already coming through because I was gonna put these right into the tower. If you're going to put them right into the tower, don't do what I just did because this is gonna be hard to break apart without them falling out. I'm gonna go ahead and let these take root in my grow station or actually along the base because my grow station is maxed out. I'm just gonna put them on the base of one of my towers where they're gonna get light and that's because I don't have the tower I need them to go into running and I don't have time to do that today. And these within two days, these are three days old right here. So within two days, they will be strong enough and structured enough in their root systems for me to break them apart. Three days for sure. I mean, look at that, three days. And these are super stable Stable now. I'm not gonna, oh, I lost one. I'm not gonna lose my wheatgrass if I turn it upside down. These have taken root. So again, you can just continue to grow them like this and water them, harvest them, regrow them, feed them nutrient water if you keep them in this container or stick them into your tower if you have room. Make sure to use my link if you decide to purchase the tower garden because I support all my customers through a private text thread. I'm here to help you along the way. My goal is not to convince people to purchase a tower and do nothing with it. My worst nightmare would be for someone to use my link to purchase a tower and then have it sitting in the garage and not use it. I want to help you guys grow food, to be passionate about growing food, excited to grow things like arugula and bring them into your diets because they're so beneficial for our health and they taste so amazing and they save us money and all the wonderful things. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys on the next video.